And the, also, I'd like to ask, uh, ask about the color palette. So you use a really colorful color palette, but at the same time, it's also kind of a dark, colorful color palette, if that makes any sense. Like, yes. How, tell me about the, the color technique that you use. Well, I mean, the whole themes and color palette that I'm using now, has it's, it's shifted. Uh, what I paint now in Madison has changed what I painted back in, in Guadalajara. Okay. Uh, a lot of the colors that I'm using now uh, reference Mexican folk art in a way. And but sometimes they're a little bit darker. A lot of the the colors uh, also like reference traditional handicraft crafts and traditional Mexican crafts, okay. which are like very vibrant vibrant colors. And that's why I'm using those those colors at the moment. Okay. And what what kind of paint do you use? Uh. It's mixed media, oil, acrylic oil. Acrylic and oil, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And who would you say are, uh, with more of the recent work that you do, do you have any direct influences that kind of led you in this direction? Oh, God. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I come from uh, a city where, like, the main, the most important artist is uh, Orozco, one of the, three great muralists of, of Mexico. He's influenced my work as well. Uh, right now, it's it's kind of a mixture. Okay. I can't say like one specific artist that I'm influenced by at the moment. Mm, I, I love uh, Posadas. He, uh, he kind of created all of that imagery of Day of the Dead. So, oh, really? I didn't know that. Because I reference a lot of Day of the Dead and the celebration, I obviously take elements from him. So he is part. He is part. I, I, I take a lot of... I'm more influenced right now by like traditional folk art. And actually, because of the pandemic, I've been able to... to take some workshops online from from oh. the people that do these crafts and it's been it's been great because otherwise it's not something that you could find easily and how they make these objects so it's been a great learning experience and um, I mean this kind of traditions it's passed on from generations to generation yeah and some of the artisans have been willing to share like how their process and the stories of where where everything comes from. Uh, I've been I took a course on uh, like a little workshop on how to make. Uh, you remember the movie Coco? Like uh, there's these magical animals called alebrijes. I don't know. It sounds familiar. Yeah, so that's kind of a mixture, like a fantastical animal, a mix of different animals. Okay. But that's that's part of of. Mexican uh, folk art, so they're actually made of um, cardboard and sometimes wood. And so an artist was able to share like how he does it from from scratch, and that that's that's something that's uh, that's really enlightened me to like to to understand the process and just uh, value everything. All of those things that we take for granted because I was used to like looking at all of that all the time. Yeah. And uh, but never really questioned like where where it all comes from and how it's made. Never. Yeah. Never saw the process. It was just something no. that was available. Yes. Huh. And and this was on the uh, this was on that virtual class that you're talking about. Yeah, but a lot of the artisans have been opening, uh, you know, virtual workshops. So because people have been asking and right. Also because they haven't been selling a lot because of tourism has gone down. Based. And mm -hmm. is there any, I, I'm curious, like with this, like the folk art one that you're talking about, sounds like it would have had a lot of people in it. And when you do this, is it just, are you observing it 
and there's a chat room? Is it like tiled videos of everybody in the room? Like, I guess, how is it set up? Well, usually, and I just took, I mean, I took one yesterday for oh. a, a different street artist that was doing stenciling. Oh, cool. Uh, um, so usually it's done through Zoom and the artist has a, has a, someone is filming him doing the process. Usually they take uh, from two to a week and how to, the whole process, two hours where where they're explaining everything and people are chatting, asking questions. Also through Zoom, I mean, they unmute themselves and ask questions. Okay, so, so it is like it, tiled video. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. But it's been great. The, uh, the one I took yesterday was from an artist. He's a street artist. His name is Nasa. He's okay. from Argentina. Uh, he does these uh, stencils, uh, like big stencils on, on walls. So he was explaining all the process through it. And there was people from, from Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, uh, Canada. I okay. mean, it, it's it's been a great experience. Uh, something that I hope stays after the pandemic. Is kind of these platforms to share to share ideas. I agree. I like I like I've always actually before this all happened, I've been a huge uh, supporter of online things being available, all basically everywhere and to everyone. And now that we've all, get, but a lot of it is that people would think it was too hard or it would take up too much time. And now that we've all had to interact with it, it's just something yep. that we know about now. And we're like, Oh, that's how you did it. And it's like, sure. It's still, it's still an annoyance to set up, but it's like, it's not as hard as you think it's, it's the, yeah, it's the putting it in your mind and it grows and grows into this bigger mm -hmm. thing that you have to deal with. It, it, that was the problem. And now it's just, yeah, now it's uh, as easy as like, I'll just turn on my phone and do it. You know, yeah, <laughs> it, yep. it can be it that is. simple. Um, so I, I do hope it stays around too, because I think it offers a lot of value to many people. And also, even after it's over, there are still rural places that don't have access to different galleries or different artists. And now they do through this type of stuff. And if it dries up, then that dries up too for those people who are finding this influence. I mean, you you said stencil artist in Argentina, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's that's not something that would have just popped up here, you know. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and it, and I've been really lucky to be able to to come to to take these workshops, and I wouldn't thought I like maybe two years ago. Like like I don't think I would have to like travel or. Right. I mean, it would be difficult to take to learn about about the process of these artists. So it's been it's been good. Granted, it would be neat to travel to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not denying that part of it. Yes, actually going to see it in person would be much more fun.